Welcome to the Leanna Line Podcast. Here we talk about all things mystical, mysterious, and a little taboo. If you're interested in diving deep, going off the beaten path, and learning tools to help you fully embrace the soul aligned life that you came here to live, then this podcast is for you. Let's open our hearts, expand our minds, and tap into the magic that lives within all of us. I'll see you there. Hello, my beautiful creative souls, and welcome back for today's podcast episode. I just wanted to pop in with this little intro to let you know kind of what it is you're about to listen to, just give you some context. On the piggyback of our last episode, I ended with explaining kind of where we're headed this fall with Leanna Line and giving you a little bit of a taste to the shadow themes and things that we were going to be dipping into. Following that episode on Instagram, I really dove into announcing the money concept coming to the table and introducing an invitation to a live event that had to do with that. So this episode here today is a live that I did following that post to explain, you know, where we're headed, really paint a bigger vision of Leanna Lined, explain my vision and concept for the transformational cave that I'm going to be creating for you and offering for you this fall, why we're kicking that off with money, what that even has to do with anything bringing it to the table, and why I chose to kick off this cave offering with this invitation to the free live event that's happening Saturday, September, not Saturday, my apologies, Friday, September 1st. So I'm going to leave you with the voice of the live. I know it's a little quiet. I'm trying to try to ramp it up and cut out any of the little extra bits you don't need to hear, but I'm so excited for you to be in this episode with me. There are so many potent wisdom drops, so many aha moments that I share with you. And I know as I continue to talk, there's a lot of going back and forth as I weave my story. Since I am doing this real time, I'm not like editing and re-recording it for you. But I trust that you will be able to follow along and that at the end, if pieces are feeling fragmented, by the time you reach the end, you will you will have a whole picture and vision of why we're talking about this, where we're going, and how this event fits into all of this. So I'll leave you there. Thank you so much. Anything that you need to know will be left in the details in the description box, including the link to the post that uh, kind of precursored this episode. So if you want to go ahead and dip into that real quick. You can do that. If you want to join the free event, that information will be there for you as well. And yeah, I can't wait to hear your thoughts, share any aha moments, and I hope you enjoy. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, my beautiful creative souls, to our live today from desperation to liberation. That sounds very dramatic, but I feel like it's very fitting for the potency that we are bringing to the table today. So what what does this mean, desperation? From desperation to liberation, what the heck are we talking about? So today I wanna share with you kind of where we're going with Leanne Aligned why I'm talking about money and my story of evolution so far this year wrapped up in everything. And this is a really big vision that I'm trying to distill down into something that you can digest. So I'm not going to make any promises about how long we're going to be here. Thank you for all the beautiful emojis. Hello to everyone joining. I'm going to try not to... Uh, chat too much with the chat and really stay focused on what we're here to talk about. But if I get off topic or if I lose you at any point and you have a question, please feel free to pop it uh, in the chat and I will circle back and try to create some more clarity around that. So let's start with the vision for this fall and where we're going with Leanna Lined. 
in the summer, right, we focused a lot on pleasure and really having fun, kind of embracing that summer fire element and really diving into more of the lighter side of things, right? Engaging with activities that bring us pleasure, that make us happy, and exploring what it means to infuse more of that into our life. So summer was really like light, but yet potent. And as we move into the fall, I really want to take us into that more deep, dark, potent side. And a lot of times when I say, or when people say things like deep, dark, right? We think dangerous, like bad, like this is going to be not good. It's not somewhere I want to go. But I think that if we're, when we're at a point of struggling within our journey and not getting as far as we'd like to go in terms of building the life that we want to live, it's not because we're doing the wrong things. It's because we're not balancing the light with the dark, And we'll get into more of what the dark is, right? Because again, it sounds scary, but it's really not. It's all part of the whole, right? So I'm going to acknowledge right up front that as I paint this vision for you and talk about my journey and invite you into this money journey and more of where we're going after that, the money is not the only thing we're going to be talking about this fall, but you, I want to acknowledge that you may not be in a place where you would like to come on that ride with me. And if you're not, that's okay. There's still space for you here. I'm still going to be sharing things a little bit on the lighter side. Pleasure Playbook is still open. You can dive right into that at any point. The link is in my bio. You can join us and explore all that there is kind of on that light side. But if you're in a place where you're ready to go a little bit deeper, then I want to invite you into what I am calling the cave. Now, again, it sounds super creepy, right? (laughs) Come in the cave with me. But really, so my entire scope of what I want to bring to you this fall, I'm labeling as the cave. And what I mean by that is when we think of a cave, right, it's kind of this underground chamber. And in ancient times, a lot of our ancestors would retreat into caves during the winter to survive (laughs) the long dark nights. And then you emerge again in the spring when new life comes, right? But not only did they use them for that, they also used them for sacred healing spaces. So oftentimes, if you were sick, if you were needing some sort of kind of shamanic leadership, you would enter into a cave, almost like a temple of healing, right? So the scope of offerings that I'm bringing to you this fall is meant to act like that cave. And the reason we go into a cave is not just for healing, but it's to go down and within so that we can rise up in the spring, right? Not as something new, but as more of who we already are. A lot of the times when we picture doing things like shadow work, which are kind of associated with this dark work or the other side of like the light side of manifestation, right? We think of it, I literally just lost my train of thought. Hold on. (laughs) Cave down shadow work. Where are we going with that? Sip of water. No, I lost it. So we're just going to keep moving. In the cave, right? In the sacred ceremonial space. Oh, no, I remember what I was talking about. So instead of doing shadow work to pull out pieces of ourselves that we need to look at to heal or make better, which is where a lot of kind of that shadow work talk usually goes, right? We talk about doing inner child work and healing limiting beliefs. And all of those things absolutely have their place within the journey. I'm not saying that these things are wrong or not going to be productive to your spiritual evolution or that people who teach them are wrong. Like, none of that is what I'm trying to say. 
But I just want to shift our perspective a little bit of instead of pulling these things out to look at them and say, oh, now you're healed and you're better and you're light, to rather go into the dark and to see the shadows as a part of ourself that deserves a seat at the table. And when we bring the parts of ourselves that aren't happy and light and, you know, amazing all of the time, it allows us to become more whole. And when you're more whole, you become more of yourself. And from this place of wholeness is where we're able to rise. So I want to really lay the foundation of as we're entering the cave virtually, metaphorically, we're not going in there to fix ourselves. We're not going in there to make ourselves better. We're going down to go in to investigate and discover and sit with and allow space for parts of ourselves that we have been ignoring, that we've been putting in the corner, that we haven't let have a voice yet, so that we can become more whole and go on this journey into becoming more of us as we step into 2024, right? So as you enter the cave, if you want to go there with me, let's talk about this. I have notes. That's why I'm looking down. Let's, let's stay on topic. Again, there's so much I want to say. So I had to, I had to write, rein it all in and write this down for you. Oh, yeah. So as we enter into the cave offerings, I'm going to be bringing to you different layers. So obviously we're all at different parts on our journey and that's what makes this so beautiful. So if you're wanting to stay in the light, you're welcome to just consume my content. I'm going to have fun YouTube videos about tarot cards like I always do because that's like my jam. <laughs> well, there's pleasure playbook for you that you can discover. I have card offerings if you want to dip your toe in a little bit. But if you want to enter into the cave, there's going to be layers of like, we start here, and then if you want to go deeper, you can go here, and if you really want to go deeper, you can go here, and then, you know, kind of a full out, playing out package. And what this is going to look like, uh, just a little sneak peek into kind of some of the things that I'm bringing to you. We're going to be doing some courses on shadow work, so really building out the cave as a self-paced course that you can kind of dip into. I'm going to be offering coaching later this year that you can layer on top of that as well. And then as more of kind of an entry layer, if you're into tarot, I'm going to be offering readings that are more centered around how you can use the information going forward. So I'm going to be building out tarot readings that will give you journaling prompts to go deeper that are going to be talking about the actual like big picture of the cards that come up for you. And I'll be offering those not only for general readings, but for a year ahead with your card of the year as like a center pillar for that. All more details on all of that coming soon, but that's a little sneak in case you were curious about that. Okay, so. So now let's kind of move into why we're talking about money and my journey with that and how this all connects and relates and why this is coming up. So let me weave these stories together for you by rewinding a little bit. At the beginning of this year, I set my word of the year to be rise. And my word was coupled with to enrich. So rise to enrich. And my goal this year was to rise up into more of myself, like we just talked about with the cave concept, right? To rise up into more of myself, but to do it with the purpose of having something that I can then give to you to help you do that. And when I started out this year, I had no flipping idea how that was going to happen because 
as I rolled into January, I was actually at a point of desperation within my life. And this is where kind of that story starts to weave in, right? We called it desperation to liberation. When I entered January, I was at a really desperate point with two things, money and my relationship with my body. Now, the reason we're talking about money is because this is kind of the seed that started all of this and began to pull the thread for me that unraveled all of these other things that I was trying so hard to make work in my life that this weren't, they weren't coming together and I couldn't figure out why. So as I entered into the year and was in this place of like, I'm on the verge of not being able to pay my bills, <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to do that in the future. Um, I've always struggled with that. And I was also at a place where I wasn't in a great spot with my body anymore. And that was also something that I always struggled with. And through all of my learning about manifestation and the practices with that and energetics and divination and I was studying astrology, right? I've been studying all this for a long time and I've come really far in my journey with it. But for some reason, no matter how much I tried, I just saw a crow fly by. <laughs> That's why I looked over there. Um, no matter how many times, how many things I tried, these two things never fell into place. Like I always was in this point of, I can't figure this out. Why is this not working? I'm literally doing everything. I read all the books. I took all the courses. I'm doing the affirmations and the tapping and the like literally everything you can think of. <laughs> I tried and including shadow work and none of it was like falling into place. So kind of around February or so, I was in this spot where I was like, okay, God, universe, whoever's out there, like <laughs> if I meant to rise to enrich, if this is where I meant to go this year, I need you to help me and show me where the missing piece is. Like, what the hell am I missing and why is this not working? Because I know that these two things, money especially, right? All of us, every single person on this planet, regardless of what wealth line you come from within your life, right? Regardless of what your parents came from and all of that stuff and the people you surround yourself with, we all have to deal with money. And no matter how much of it you have, there seems to be this underlying story of not enough. And that was something I really felt like it's never enough. Like it's never enough. And it's, I was always in this state of like, I need to survive, <laughs> right? And if you can relate to this, give me a little heart or something, because this is something that I feel like even if you're not in a place with it right now, we've all felt that at one point or another. And so after I asked that, right, this, and I want to say, as I explain this, preface this with, this didn't come as like a, oh my God, I see it all now. Like it all clicks into place. Like there was no like aha moment. There was just a bunch of breadcrumbs that led me to where I'm at now at a point where I can put it all together and give it to you, right? So I just want to preface that as I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate the shift or explain to you the shift, but it didn't happen like that. Okay. So after that, I was led into a series of, you know, I followed my intuition as I always do doing my thing, learning about a bunch of different things. And I encountered something that said, and I can't even remember what the exact thing was, but it brought to the table the concept of needing stability and restrictions and really that emperor energy, if you're familiar with Tara, right? That the laws and the rules and the structure, right? Needing that to hold the feminine energy, the creative energy, the expressive energy, the energy that wants to create. And that having this more rigid structure, right, doesn't hinder 
the creativity and the expansion, but it creates a container or a set of boundaries in which it can grow, right? If you think about pouring water into a cup, if you pour water into a cup, the cup is the boundary and it will get rise higher, right? But if you just poured water onto table, the floor, the ground, right? Hoping that it would rise, <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere, it's gonna spread out or go down or somewhere else, right? There's nothing to hold it to help it rise. So through that, I started thinking about, you know, here's this, we have the emperor and empress energy, right? If we're talking about tarot, kind of that masculine and feminine energy and really coming back to this idea of wholeness. And as I was thinking more about wholeness and my idea with money, I realized that even though I was focusing on manifestation and structure, right? Manifestation and being the creating more money part and structure being in the like, you know, paying attention to my finances and managing my bank account part, I was still doing it from a masculine energy perspective and masculine and feminine energy have nothing to do with gender so just to clarify that it just has to do with the qualities that i just explained but i was still doing it all for my brain i was still trying to figure out how do i manifest more money through my brain through everything i've learned through the knowledge i've gained through trying to hack right because money can feel like this really elusive thing that we're just trying to like figure out this mysterious puzzle of how to make it appear like magic, right? We, we think there's some type of trick and we learn a lot of different techniques, even if they're from energetic standpoints of trying to figure out the secret to like make this thing that we need to, to survive in the structure of society that was created. How do we make that appear? How do we make that work for us? And as I came to this realization that it was all in the brain that I was working in, I was like, okay, there has to be something else that comes to the table with this besides my brain, because clearly this is not working. And at that time, I was still really struggling with my relationship with my body. I was trying to, again, fix it from my brain, to figure out the workout routine, to do all of this. I think you get the picture now, right? So fast forward to stumbling upon my now lovely mentor, Victoria Washington, and her House of Wheat, which is her one of her offerings that she creates. And I had gone, as you do when you find someone new, right? You would consume all of their content <laughs> that they have out for free. And she was actually doing this free event. So I attended the free event and she was advertising enrollment for this membership. And something in me was like, this is the thing. Like, this is your missing link. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> my brain was like, this is insane. Like, no, that that's not going to work. But my body was like, this is where we need to be. So I showed up. And when I got in the room, the virtual room, at the free event, Victoria started talking about money in ways that I had never heard before. And I'm not going to go into all details about that because I want to circle back to money and the offering that I'm bringing to the table first for you. But just know that that's kind of that point. So after... I got into that space and had my mind blown and realized that the way that she was teaching was different than any other manifestation thing I had already done. I listened to my intuition, regardless of what my brain thought, and I said, let's do this. And in her house of we, in her membership, she focuses a lot on the body and healing money through the body and your bloodline and all of these different somatic practices that I was really uncomfortable with. <laughs> Let's be honest. When I entered there, her membership, I thought it was weird. I didn't get it. And it was uncomfortable. And if 
I hadn't committed to a certain number of months, I probably would have dipped out of it because when we're met with the thing that we need most to unlock, this is coming back to our cave right now, right? When we're met with the thing, the shadow, the thing that we're struggling with most, it's often the key to unlock all of the things that we're desiring, right? It's the thread that starts to unravel everything else. But when we confront it, we often run away from it, even though it's the key, because <laughs> because it sucks, because it's hard, because it's uncomfortable, because it's scary, because it's pushing the boundaries of things that we don't want to deal with, right? Or that we struggled with in the past, or that we find uncomfortable, or that, you know, fill in the blank, X, Y, Z, but it's scary, right? So as I was doing this a couple of months in, I started to weave the pieces together because I was doing these somatic practices with my body, right? And blowing my mind, <laughs> shifting my thoughts about money and how the two are intertwined. And it was through this that I realized probably my biggest revelation of the year that has really led to a lot of changes that I've been able to make, kind of filled in this lock, right? And that is, and this may not make sense to you yet, but your intuition doesn't speak to you through your brain. It speaks to you through your body. And that blew my mind. That wasn't something that anybody said to me, but like through doing all of this, I was like, this, yes. Yes. So much when we're taught about following our intuition we think of the intuitive nudges that we get, right? The, I think I should go do this. I hear this voice. I know this thing, right? Because that's how a lot of the information that we get is processed. We think of the clairs, um, if you're familiar with those. Clairaudience is hearing. Clairsentience is seeing, right? All of our main senses, hear, see, smell, taste, happen in our head, right? So we often think of them as things that are coming from the brain or information that we're receiving into our brain. But your intuition actually comes through feeling the other sense. And that's a full body experience. That doesn't just happen in your brain. That happens everywhere else. And a lot of the times when we get intuitive hits, we don't know why. We can't explain why this is the thing we need to do. We can't explain how it's going to all come together. We don't see the full picture. We just know this is where I need to go. That doesn't come from here. That comes from here. I just want to take a minute. Let's just take a sip of water. That, that felt really big. So take a sip of water and let that land for a minute. But Through coming to this realization, I knew that in order to bring you the full scope of what I wanted to offer you inside the cave, right, inside this miraculous journey that we're going on together, if you're with me, and if you're with me, give me a little little heart either in the comments or wherever, because um, I'd love to know who's ready to, to dive in with me, but I knew that I wanted to bring this somatic practice, this revelation, right, that I had through this experience with my body to you. But I also know that while this feels like the key, while I know this is the missing piece, I also know that I am not currently in a space where I can safely facilitate an experience like that for you because I'm not a somatic practitioner. <laughs> and 
it's something I definitely am looking into. I want to step into that. I want to do more of that. But in order to bring this to you, I needed to be able to partner with someone that could bring this to you. And what better way to do that than to partner with the same creator, the same person, the same experience that helped me with this piece. So to be able to bring this to you, I have decided to virtually link arms with Victoria Washington and the House of We as an ambassador of the space to bring you this free event. And the free event is called Torchbearer. And I'm going to talk more about it in a minute. I'm going to give you all the details that you need to know. But the reason that I'm inviting you to this is not because I'm trying to sell you something, right? When we think of ambassador, we often think of like cheesy salesmen. And once you get into the free event, if you choose to attend, you'll understand that the space is different. But when I say ambassador, I'm not here to sell you something. It's about becoming a leader and being able to spread this with you, like to share it with you. And the only reason I'm not doing it myself is because I I can't at this point in time. Um, but that's definitely something I'm working on. And if I could work for <laughs> Victoria in the House of We on a real regular basis, facilitating this experience, I 100% would jump at the chance to do that. But I just wanted to put that out there and explain, like, see how big this is, right? You, from the beginning, from the cave, to the desperation, to where I'm at now with the liberation through my body, right? And we, I mean, haven't even gotten into that part yet. I just wanted to mention this part, right? Because we're weaving the money and everything together. But yeah, I'm inviting you to this event so that you can experience this same somatic practice in a way that is safe <laughs> and potent. And while I'm not going to be teaching, I'm going to be there, like virtually in the Zoom room at the one-day event. It's a one-day free event, no strings attached. It's called Torchbearer. It's about picking up the torch of your wealth identity and walking forward with it. And there's going to be a whole list of events that you get to attend if you want to you can pick and choose but i'm going to be at every single one of those events there's a event about let's let's see let's get the real the real um she the first event is about money attachment styles which was like pff, pff, mind blowing for me the second event is about wealth scripting so it's a journaling and um money scripting, not money scripting, my goodness, <laughs> um, money somatic practice. There we go. That's the word. Um, then there's going to be kind of a chat. There's going to be the complete somatic practice experience, which Victoria has created called the wealth embodiment flow. And then at the end, there's a Q and A. So that again, I'm going to, that was a very un, you know, polished definition of what's going to be happening, but all that to say, I'm going to be there virtually in the room, in the Zoom room. You can see me. You can talk to me behind the scenes, all that stuff if you would like to. I just won't be teaching because it can't be, but I'm very much a part of this. Okay. Back to my story. And if you're interested in the event, there's going to be lots more information that I'm going to post for you in stories and all of that stuff. Now that I understand the piece about the body wisdom, right? Once I understood that and went through one of the trainings within the House of We that talked about healing your money lineage and it pairs your body with your, your inner knowing. And I'm not going to go too much in depth about what it talks about, but it ties your bloodline, your lineage, with your money. And to me, this was a new concept and really unlocked a whole lot for me because when I had tried to manifest money in the past and I meditated on it and all of these things and I had this weird feeling that like part of my destiny was to struggle. 
And my brain was like, that doesn't make any sense. But something about it just felt like, like I wasn't meant to have money. And another part of me knew that that's bullshit. Like, <laughs> we all need it. Like, that's, why would you come with a destiny for that? And once I went through this thing, I understood that within my body were the beliefs that I was not going to have enough because of this bloodline story that had been passed down to me through all of my ancestors, not just ones that I knew, but from before, right? And that the reason I was feeling this block was because of that. And what I needed to then do was decide that I was going to be the one to break that, that I was going to be the one to heal my relationship with money, my relationship with my body, everything else, so that I could then be the one to lead us forward. And that felt really big. But in that, there was a piece of wisdom that I knew was exactly for me because this is what I've been teaching and sharing about for my entire career. If you want to manifest the life of your dreams, you are first required to do one thing. That is to decide. To decide that you have the power to do something different. That you have the power to choose that whatever you want can be yours. Even if you don't know how, right? Because that's part of the journey, right? But there's a choice point that we all come to within every point in our life. And it is, am I going to be the driver or am I going to be the passenger? And it's not an easy choice because when you choose to be the driver of your life, you have to deal with all the stuff that comes at you. If you're the passenger, the driver's handling it, right? You're like, you got it. Like, I just, you know, make decisions based on what you bring to me. But like, ultimately, you're, you're steering the vehicle. You make the hard choices. You deal with the traffic. You deal with, you know, getting pulled over. Like, whatever's happening, that's a whole lot of your problem and not a whole lot of my problem. But when you decide to be the driver of your life, you have to do the hard things. And that's why most people don't choose to. That's why most people won't manifest the life of their dreams. Because they don't want to be the driver. They don't want to sit in the seat and make the hard decisions. They don't want to go into the cave. They just want to fuck around in the sun on the beach. <laughs> And there's definitely a place for that for the driver as well, right? You get to have it all. But you have to choose. And that's what I want to bring to you through all of my teachings and really center this more in the depth, what, what, center what I'm offering more in the depth of this is your choice. We can't always choose what happens to us, right? What, what happens in the world around us, but we can choose what we do next. And this is a really important piece for shadow work. And I promise I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but I hope you can see how this all weaves together, right? When we go into shadow work, when we go into the cave, when we decide that I would like to be the driver of my life and to begin to look at these things that are tripping me up and figure out how to unlock my own key. It's not about looking at the past and rewriting the story, right? Often, if you hear about shadow work, the number one thing people talk about is healing your childhood trauma by getting rid of limiting beliefs that are blocking your manifestation. That's not what this is about. 
This is about bringing the shadow to the table, going into the cave, taking a look at it and saying, you have a place here. I understand this is what happened in the past. I know that up until this point, you have served me well. And I also want to show you now, from where I am now, that there's a different way. That we're going to be the driver. And it's not about healing and getting rid of the past. It's about putting it in the car with you and saying, we're pivoting and we're going this way. I know that you experienced all of this. I know that we have all of this stuff wrapped in us that's hindering us from moving forward because we're still operating under the assumption that like this is a scenario. But me as the driver can see and I can see where we're going. And I don't know how we're going to get there, but I know that we're going to get there because I can trust where I'm being led. So we're going to take the shadow and we're going to integrate it back into us and we're going to pivot and take it along for the ride into the future because we get to decide where we're going next, regardless of where we've been. That feels complete now. I think I've, I think I've wrapped that up. Let me know how that's, how that's landing with all of you. I'm going to take a quick sip of water, look at my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything that I wanted to cover. I'm seeing all your hearts in the comments. I did see them when I was asking and you were popping them in, so thank you for that. I didn't want to distract myself and lose my train of thought by, by addressing it in the moment, but I see you. I see you. Uh, I think that's it. That's, that's kind of the vision. That's where I'm at. Oh, liberation. I never brought that to the table. I never really addressed that. But the reason that I called this desperation to liberation is because I hope that you can see where this piece fits in, where the liberation fits in, where the desperation comes from being the passenger and the liberation comes from being the driver. And not only being the driver from a place of your mind, but being a driver from the place of your body. Your body is the intelligence that you came here with, that your intuition speaks to you through. So we need to make sure that we're using both of them moving forward to get to this state of liberation, right? To fully embody all of us. So that is why I'm inviting you into the cave and kicking it off with the invitation to Torchbearer with me and the House of We. Because this all started for me with marrying the connection of these two together. And even if you don't want to join the membership, like I'm not trying to <laughs> sell you anything. I sincerely want to invite you into this free event that is 1000% changed my life and allowed me to understand where my own key is, right? It's not that this is giving me something that I miss. That's not about giving you something that you're missing. It's about opening a door that you didn't know existed so that you can discover it within yourself. And that's really where I'm taking us, right? I'm taking us into the cave, giving you tools, saying, I'm going to be right here with you. I'm your cheerleader. I'm going to hold your hand. We're going to go through this hard shit together because Lord knows we all need support, right? But you ultimately have to make the choice to be the driver. I'm going to invite you into these spaces. I'm going to give you the tools. I'm going to share a bunch of free content with you. I'm going to offer coaching. I'm going to do all these different things. But you have to make the choice to do the hard thing for you. I need you to take my hand as the driver, not sit as the passenger with me, okay? If you're feeling all of this, if you're like, Heck yes, Leanne, I'm ready. Let's go. I'm scared, <laughs> but I know this is what I need and I want to go there with you. Then I invite you into the cave with me, starting with the first offering, which is Torchbearer, the free one day event to ignite your wealth identity, to pick up your own torch of financial liberation, and to walk forward with it as the driver of your own 
freaking life because it's the only way you're going to get where you want to go. And that's the cold, hard truth of it. And it's a shitty realization to come to sometimes, but you don't have to do it alone, right? You don't have to do it alone. They're with you. We're going to do this thing. We're going to step into 2024 as literally the best version of yourself, not because you became somebody new, but because you learned how to become more of you. Okay. So in my stories, I'm going to be sharing all of the, the fine details of this event with you. I'm going to be tagging, you know, House of We in Victoria, Washington. If you want a little taster, even before the free event, Victoria did a live on the House of We page. I'll link that for you in the story so you can check that out. It's a really good kind of precursor of like, this is what this is woman is kind of all about. This is what she's bringing to the space. And she shares some of her views on money. So it's a really good precursor, even if you aren't sure you want a job kind of dedicate the whole day to the live event or anything. I'll leave that there for you. I'm open for any questions. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say, the live event is on Friday, September 1st. <laughs> that probably would have helped, right? So yeah, I'm going to leave all those details for you. Thank you so much for joining me for this live. It has been an absolute pleasure. If I, again, lost you, confused you at any point, you have any questions, email me, email me, <laughs> DM me, <laughs> email me, comment. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, then you can email me. But yeah, I'm so excited to be going to this space with you. I can't wait to continue rolling out kind of these layers of the cave. And again, if you're not in this space right now, don't worry about it. Like, if you're likely in, this is way too much for me. I am not going into the dark. We are already in the dark. I'm not going there. That's okay. There are, there are light spaces where you can join me. Pleasure Playbook, YouTube, all the things. We can still connect. We can still have fun. I haven't forgotten about you. But I'm really excited to move forward and I'm going to stop rambling. I hope you have a beautiful day. Big love to all of you. I'll see you again soon. That is it for me today, my loves. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope that you found this really life-changing in kind of a mind-blowing way. If you're interested in joining me for the Torchbearer event via the House of We on September 1st, I would love to have you there. I'll leave all of the information you need to know down below. And if you're listening to this in the future and you miss this event and you want to be on the wait list for the next free event that happens with me in the House of We, then I will leave that wait list information in place of that link down below. So with all that being said, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you guys in my next episode. Take care, guys. Bye.